Byzantium, oh, my war weariness is just crazy right now. But you can't tempt me with a 16 population city with only 49 defenses and no walls. What are you doing? What are you doing? Come on, behave yourselves. <laughs> just, just behave, because I very much need this city. And I'm going to aggressively try and seize it. Oh, that's a big amount of damage. Yeah, I reckon next turn we can take that. Opportunistic. This is, it just shows you how much resistance Congo has been throwing up at us. We've been unable to move for some time now. Let's see what Byzantium chooses to throw at us now. Well, military emergency. Actually, we don't mind that going through at all because now this city is going to get attacked and it has full loyalty. Yeah, that works perfectly for us. Oh, also, bam, ballistics. This crossbow for 310 gold can be upgraded deliciously. Now, priority is pillaging because we have no gold of our own. Shouldn't be a problem in the long run. But we just need to make sure we don't run out. Oh, another city with no defenses. Well, that's intriguing, isn't it? That's very intriguing. Thessalonica. Thank you so much. You are now mine. Oh, you are very badly loyal as well. Speed. Speed is needed here. Oh, Congo has field cannons. All right. I can't just sit my troops in their territory pointlessly now. We have to leave. Make sure we come back with proper siege equipment. My days of endless pillaging of Congo have unfortunately finished. It's always going to happen at some point, but it doesn't make it any less sad a day. Come on, Odessa. Fall. Oh, that's so close. Well, that's the Mayan improvement. It's like a cool mini pyramid. Gives two faith, one science, extra faith if it's next to a city center, one science if it's next to an observatory, gives extra amenities. It just basically improves on all the stuff they had before. Nice. I like that. That's cool. Okay, Congo are now attacking me with a lot of field cannons. Like a lot. All right. We have nationalism now. That's quite exciting. That means I can make armies specifically if I take cities as well. So that is now a line inventory army. I'm hoping loyalty wise this city should be a lot better. Minus six. Good. Goodness me, these cities are difficult to hold on to. But that is now a Curaçao. Renaissance walls to my south. We'll keep fighting on as many fronts as we can. At the moment, as I say, this war is doing us well. It's mostly that I just don't believe I've got the loyalty to hold on to these Congo cities without the war actively going on because grievances are going to be an issue. If I just throw governors at the issue, maybe we can get away with that. <laughs> maybe. I think I might just have to take the risk here. And ask for everything. This is going to be a big peace deal. I'll immediately go and denounce them so I can finish the job. Loyalty may be a problem, but their field cannons were just appearing and they're shredding my MP, my very highly trained MP, to pieces, and I don't need that right now. That's sort of my gold out temporarily. We'll denounce them. The peace will take some war weariness off my land. Gives me just a moment to consolidate power, to think about how we're going to deal with Byzantium. This field cannon is kind of part of it because it's double firing, can sit on a district and just shred. Adrianople, Renaissance walls, but that's urban war there. How bad's the loyalty? Minus three, minus seven. It's not as bad as it could have been, to be honest with you. I think we can just about hold this, especially when this city flips. When that one flips, we'll be, we'll be laughing. Yeah, this could have gone a lot worse, like a lot worse. Napoleon, you know we're on a particularly warlike game if we pick up Napoleon. Industrialization, how much coal did we get? Uh, oh, we've settled. Okay, we've got one source without any issue. Perfect, we've got another one there. Great, means my capital can put down things like work workshops, armories, factories. Back at home, the economic benefits of us going to continue to war have started to just pay off a little bit. It might take a little while for everything to really make their way back to the capital, but we are starting to see a little bit more of a proper war economy now. There's industrialization. Next up, flight. We can pick up observation balloons, then I'll have a chance. Then I'll really have a chance. Still pillaging, reducing the strength of enemy cities. Still firing at it with a field cannon that's got a lot of bonuses stacked up, but this line inventory now has a 110 strength. Whack. That's good. That's a good hit. Muscat. Good find, but we still haven't found a natural wonder with Darwin that is bigger than one tile. Come on, there's got to be something in here. There's a huge desert. There's loads of city-states. It's normally where you find this stuff. Fully fleshed out encampment. That's in China's old capital. That's looking really tasty. Now we can start building some very cheap armies. Look at this. Pike and Shot army five turns, and that's without any of the fun buildings like a factory, which I'll be putting down imminently. Also, if you wanted to see how how much damage this drought did. Watch all of these tiles around the pasture. As soon as I fix the pasture, you ready? It goes bam. Eight extra culture in my empire. Each one of these is giving two culture per adjacent pasture or camp. It went up when I got military science. Amazing. Go on. Take it, Adrianople. Yes. 
Excellent, another city falls. Loyalty is now becoming a lot nicer. Taking a huge snack, a huge bite out of Byzantium. I've got three turns to hit the Golden Age. I need five era score. I have a feeling I haven't got a naval unit yet. That could be something quite good. Quite easy to put down. Just scouting out here. This city only has an ancient wall. Oh, oh, that's what you like to see. Oh, another drought just hit as I was fixing everything up. That's unfortunate. Anyway, for a bit of era score, how's this? Got my own profit. I could make my own religion, which I am actually quite tempted to do, so I will. Better late than never. This religion is going to give me the wonderful. Actually, is there anything? Anything it could give me that would be good at all? <laughs> Zen meditation. That's easy enough to deal with. And then holy order to spread it quicker. Perfect. Era score. Given. And we converted a holy city. Of course we did. <laughs> we reformed a religion in the middle of where this old religion was. Now we've knocked Feed the World out of this city, which is not ideal. But who needs Feed the world really. I've always said across my entire YouTube career that Feed the World is completely overrated and is not needed. I mean, you can all agree that I've said that, right? Live entry, it, it just walks up and says, hello, I have 108 strength. Nice to meet you. Bam. Oh, I think those walls may have been bypassed there. Another golden age. Let's see everybody plummet into dark ages, please, because I could use a loyalty break. I tell you that. Dark, 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 dark. Oh yeah. All right, that's perfect. To arms now, we can get 15% production towards military units that stacks with all of my Zulu benefits. We can take over this city state now for a bit of era score right in the beginning of the session. We'll do a tiny bit of pillage once I've started to work on natural history like so. And then I go to take this city. Beautiful. Loyalty is looking magnificent now. And this field cannon is just ripping through units. Look at that. Bam. <laughs> Don't mess around, please. Second drought. This is the second time it's overlapped these two. That is ridiculous. It turns out I didn't win the aid request because I went to war with the person that I was giving aid to, but I, I can forgive myself for that. That, I mean, this is awful. Oh, gonna leave that alone. We're just gonna walk away and pretend like nothing's happening. These barbs are still continuing their eternal quest to destroy my capital. To be honest, I'm not really giving them the attention they deserve because my entire army is down south. Next up, we are taking a look at Constantinople. And again, this field cannon is gonna lead the way with some big hits. Not far from flight though. Flight will help a lot. Byzantium desperately wants peace. I might give them peace once we've taken Constantinople. They might be able to fund the rest of my wars. Always something that's quite entertaining. I am destroying holy sites of theirs though because suddenly faith is a very important resource for me because I can use it to buy armies of bombards just like that. Yeah, faith is very important. Almost more important than gold now when I start to think about it because it's just efficient. Really efficient at producing things. There's natural history. They can get water parks, zoos, aquariums, all the fun things to keep myself eternally happy. My capital coming along nicely as well. We're just bringing a builder back to fix everything. One day I'll find out where those barbs are to the north. I almost don't want to know. They're almost a sort of mystical mystery for me. Where do they come from? Who are they? Why have they raided me forever? Why hasn't Darwin found a natural wonder yet? There's so much that I just don't know. I like that. They spawned a pike and shot, attacked across the river, killed it immediately, and then that was it. Uh, there was another drought. Who is it that keeps chopping everything down? I swear it's not me. Probably me. Fly Right. Let me get myself an observation balloon and move the bombard, which can now fire over the top and do 81 damage. To be honest, the field cannon is actually a better siege weapon at this point in time, but it's still nice to have them on side. Let's go for rifling and refining, see where the oil is. We've just grabbed another city from Congo, but from loyalty this time. That'll put the pressure on this one, which will flip and that'll leave them... I know they'll be out of the game at that point, so we won't actually need to go back to war with Congo. Amazing. Bombard. Do some damage. Field cannon. Do some damage. Take Constantinople. City. Taken. Peace. Very much offered. Give me all of your gold. 76 per turn. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. We can have peace now. Give all of my army a turn, maybe two turns, and we'll head up north now to Mapuche, who does again have steel walls. Bit of an issue, but we are able to prey in units a lot more effectively now, especially in cities like this, where I can prey them and get them to lob over the top from an encampment where I'm safe. And we've got a great engineer that means we can culture bomb now. Yay. I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. <laughs>
My first coal power plant. Done. Perfect. Beautiful. Oh, Geneva. That doesn't sound like a city that should be a three city, you know? I think that could have possibly been a city state at one point. Hmm? I reckon we're going to liberate Geneva, but not before we grind a little bit of experience out like so. So it would be a good staging point for an attack, and I do have an Akanda there. Hmm, no, I'm going to keep it. Yeah, I've changed my mind instantaneously. But let's go and move my Kirisa into Mapuche's land. We're going to go and see how strong their ranged attack is. Actually, I need to spend a little bit of faith now to start spreading my own religion around, make sure I'm not following Byzantiums. That would be a long-term error. I've moved my spy over to Mapuche now. A little bit of combat strength just to try and offset a little bit of this really annoying plus 10 they've got against me at the moment. I'm unlikely to ever lose the plus 10 because I am forever golden. That's just what I do. Four damage and three damage. We've had a game where the AI just has been unable to muster a decent range strength on their cities and I'm not complaining here. Right, Wars of Religion, Oligarchic Legacy. We're going to start putting some of that stuff to bed now. I would prefer it if we could work on some economic policies now like Craftsman with 50 production. Natural Philosophy is a really good one. Colonial Taxes is now doing better than Merchant Confederation. This is a good government but we need to work towards a better government. A naughtier government. We'll see what we can have. Okay, one of my apostles has debater. Excellent. Two of them have debater. I managed to get two debaters in one go. I don't know how I did that. But I don't even need to start an inquisition if we have two debaters. Just go and kill Byzantium's religion manually. Old fashioned style. I've taken over the tech lead by the way. And Mapuche is only one tech behind so they're pretty much even with me here. We'll work on it. We'll see what we can do. World Congress. Give me culture bombs and city center buildings. Thank you. Both went through. AI as predictable as ever but we've got no oil. You're kidding me. How have we got no oil? We have 20 cities. Loads offshore. Some in the desert between my cities. Okay, right. So it's not that we don't have it. Oh, there's some right, right between my cities there. Okay, we've got loads of it. It's just not improved right now. Okay, let's just go grab it. Shouldn't be too difficult at all. There's enough. That means I can go for artillery. Go for some very powerful siege weapons. Congo's out of the game. They took themselves out of the game with loyalty. I say took them out of the game or took themselves out of the game. It's probably a little harsh that. I very much stole their cities, but it's, you know, fairly accurate. Alotara has got their own religion now as well. I'm feeling less worried about it by the second. Walls are starting to tumble down now in Mapuche. Again, annoying because they're plus 10 against people in Golden Age. That unfortunately applies also to their city defense, so they can be very, very tough against me. Look at that, plus 10 versus civilization. So even though the city has no walls, it can easily withstand an attack against me. So I'll just pillage it instead. I think that's fair. Means that I can buy just a single bombard and use El Cid to just make it into a core quickly though. That's something that's useful. I found Nan Madol right in the middle of the sea. So I'm going to take it over and just explore a load of stuff. And there's Uluru. Kind of one tile wonder though. Got to be some more stuff somewhere. Come on Darwin. Find something cool. Bombards. Bombards. Just give me the levels as quickly as I can. Water of life. Look at that. Fountain of youth. My Kurosawa is now getting plus 10 health when it heals. That's pretty cool. Whenever I pick up the Scorched Earth Civic, I always forget to put Total War in, but I remembered this time. Amazing. That's really cool. Pusher's troops are dishing damage to me pretty effectively here, but I have enough units just to keep sieging this city. It's very slow. This is a sort of medieval speed siege over a matter of about two, three hundred years, but we're not letting go. There is something very satisfying about the fact that I've limited Byzantium to the frozen south of the continent. It's like, I'll have your good stuff. You just wait down there. You've got mausoleum. You'll be fine. So a couple of sneaky trade routes. What I'm doing is I'm setting up my attack on the Mayans because their capital is there. It's got Renaissance walls, but there's a distinct lack of cities to the north of them. So if I send a trade route from Bulawo all the way down, connect that, and then send a second one up to the north, I'll be able to connect both of my production cities, which are now spitting troops out at a very rapid rate, directly to their capital, which is quite handy. I'll be able to just run units in fairly quickly and certainly the hope anyway making this as easy as I can for myself whilst my empire toils in the north slowly getting through it doesn't matter how crazy strong the 99 strength city is with enough attacks and enough siege we eventually start to break it down very slowly but we do I realize I've made my own religion and I've been fighting a religion but I haven't unlocked astrology or celestial navigation whoops we don't really know what we're doing we're just muddling along and making a religion and we're like is this is this what we're supposed to do? Anyone really know? This is often a very good way of farming Eriscourt. Just leave random cities on the 
the edges of an empire that you've conquered, never really bother to pick them up because when they do join your empire, well, it gives you era score every time. Right, here we go. This is the trade route that's really important. Look at this. Hills, jungle, 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 desert. I need a quick route down there as fast as I can. I'm going to send another trade route this direction and yeah, we should be fine. Byzantium denouncing me. What could I have possibly done? Couldn't tell you. It's a mystery. There's steel. Now we're making artillery. Good time as well because we've taken a city from a poche. And now we're one city out. Hello there. You don't mind if I borrow your stuff, do you? No, I'm sure you don't. Oh, but I, I tell you what I did. I took Alhambra, which meant that Total War wasn't then working, so I just lost about 70 science. Such a really annoying thing. I wish it would just hold on to the government you had before, but I'm sure there's a reason why it doesn't work like that. It probably discovered some bugs that came with it or something like that. Force modernization. That's what I need. It's actually a good card. Good time to get that card as well. Well, now that I've got artillery, I I think the best thing I can do is planes. I may not even get to them in time, but if in doubt, send a bomber. I feel like that's always been a pretty good piece of advice. Uh oh, that's a blizzard right outside my capital, headed to the northeast. Oh, that may take out my camps, but uh, never mind? Question? I'm sure we won't regret that at all. Now the road is going up in the other direction. We should meet our units. Artillery, my first one. I think we should have artillery. Yeah, three artillery armies built to shuttle right down to the front line. I'll buy in an observation balloon on the way. That Congo City has fallen to me. Oh, look at this. You know you've done a good job when you have all of these things to repair. Let's focus on gold pillaging now. That seems to be what we need more than anything else. But if my bombards on the Mapuche border are now upgraded to artillery, okay, yeah, that is significantly more damage now. There's no point attacking with my melee units. Let's instead continue to do beautiful, beautiful pillage. How much damage did that storm do in the end? Nothing. No damage. That worries me. What have I missed? <laughs> Sometimes you see that and you're like, hmm, I feel like that should have done damage, but hasn't. Well, Darwin was trying to find a natural wonder and instead I found a frozen barb island. Does that count? Um, I, I don't know if it does, you know, but uh, nice try. First artillery, this is just a regular core with intelligence and a great general. So far, nothing too special. This, however, is an army with the same things, but also plus 10 from shells. Bam. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a huge increase in damage. Oh no, am I converting your turret? Oh dear. How about you stop bringing your apostles to me, eh? Oh, we've almost wiped their religion out of their own lands. Oh, that is, that is a little bit sad. I do apologize. It's not true apology. It's Ursa's special pity apology. It's a very condescending one. Life is made so much easier by artillery. Oh, that last one, look at that. It's a big hit, that's a big hit. Just saving my field cannon to actually attack units as well. You move to there. You move to that. Yeah, there's the siege. I thought there was a possibility where I could do it with the units I had. I could attack into the city now and force the matter, but next turn the artillery is just going to reduce the walls to ashes, so I might as well wait. Oh, Nabel! Actually getting scientists now. This is like my second or third. One strike and two. There go the walls. I knew they were not long for this world. Let's make an army out of this Curacao. Capital has been taken. Victor, get in here. Okay, right. At this point, we don't need any more cities from Mapuche. We just need the one city from the Mayans and as you can see the deliverance, the route is on its way and this one has already carved a road through all of this disgusting terrain as well so my first artillery is ready to go. Second one is on its way so that'll be three artillery. I'll make something quick that can catch up with the front line. A Kurosar army. Yeah that'll do. And then my Chinese city afterwards can build a cavalry army to catch up as well. What oh, pike and shot army. You see, we've got so much troop. I mean, this is what I love about late game Zulu. They are ridiculous at pumping units out. As soon as you get your unique district with the military academy, you're getting massive bonuses to unit production. Very fun. Oh, you'll never guess where the drought has hit. It's gone again in the same place. Let's see if game puts a second drought right on top of the first one for the third time in a row. If it does, I think there'll be something. There'll be something with the game, something coded in that keeps picking up that spot over everything else. I know droughts get hit where there's no woods or no water sources or anything like that. So what I could do is just plant a wood, break it up that way. But this is scientifically interesting. You can't deny that, can you? Sieging more cities for the sake of it. You know another thing that's very satisfying about sieging cities later in the game? Just how big that red arrow is. It goes, wee, bam. And again, wee, bam. Oh, it's the simple things in life, is it not? I think it is. Lovely stuff. And this, I tell you what, this field cannon has been an absolute demon. Let's 
just a random crossbow here. Don't worry about where this road's going. This is a passage that you don't need to travel down, mines. No, there's nothing, nothing but pain down here. You continue building Broadway. That's the thing to do. You go for that inevitable culture victory that you're so close to getting. I've got no idea what I'm going to do about that. Oh, you're going to get me. Serving me a massive serving of whoop. Strike and strike. I'm even going to use some MP to take the city because I can. Hang on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I... Uh, Oh, I, I don't I don't feel so good. I feel deeply unwell. There's something in the back of my neck. It's itching. It's scratching. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I've got vertigo, dizziness, loss of confidence. What the... Ah, ah, oh yeah, like I can see the problem. Hang on. Let me just uh, yoink and yoink. And there we go. You see, look, I feel so much better. Oh, sometimes you just have to trust your gut, you know? Sometimes you just, you don't feel right and you just follow, follow that itch. You'll find the root cause before you know it. I need another general. I need so many generals. My army is scattered all over the place. Curacao, though, is finished as well as, now, look, my artillery army have finally made it to the road. Yay. It is ridiculous. I mean, look at this. This is what Zulu is like late in the game. 330 production for a cavalry. The same production for a course. You make cores for three. They are no more expensive and they have plus 15 combat strength. So I mean, that's something. And then 495 production for the army. To be honest, you might as well just build cores. But I like the armies because, well, I'm rich with production. Rich with production and I would say deeply arrogant. Oh, you want to get involved with my religion, do you? Haha. <laughs> no. Everyone out. Everyone out. It's this I'm keeping an eye on. I don't want to be converted by anybody. Because if I start taking people out of the game, there's a chance I might trigger that religious loss w without meaning to with absolutely without meaning to so i am spending a bit of faith here and there i could be buying more army but to be honest zulu's production is so crazy there's no need there's advanced flight i guess i probably should have built an airport that's that's the one thing i'm missing all right well, i'll just go for drones instead if you hadn't noticed at this point tech wise there's not much we really need anymore i've just got a great general shuttling troops from the front line <laughs> send them down it's all good more artillery on the way but they'll never reach their front line most probably. All well, this artillery though has just about made it now to the front line. Renaissance walls, they're pretty tough, but are they tough enough? Oh, the answer of course is no. Oh no, that's embarrassing. This is Mapuche at full power. Uh, you, I'll come to you in a second. I just had a pike and shot army killed by a warrior. I kid you not. <laughs> Admittedly, it was on like one health because of all of the other attacks and this started with a hundred health and you can see it's now on one because the game gave it a token victory, but still that is embarrassing. We won't talk about that. We we won't we won't talk about that one. That's that's just something that happened. Well, I don't even have the observation balloon yet, but if I denounce, I could immediately trigger a golden age war. Remember I did that with my golden age? Ah ah ah. First of all, I need to three up the line of sight to get rid of all the zone of control. The warrior monk turns out is no match for my Kurosawa army. And now the artillery just drives through. It has the movement to actually just stick on that tile. Again, we haven't brought an observation balloon with us just yet. Not for lack of trying, just haven't quite got around to it yet. But in the meantime, um, yeah, I don't think we're going to need it because the power of Zulu condemns you. Oh, I didn't even get to enjoy the naughty government. Dear, oh dear, what a shame. Yay, just as I thought, the second drought did hit. We've got the double drought going on again. Doesn't matter how cool these walls are, it's all starved of water. Oh my lord, this warrior monk army is insane. Never did I think I'd see the day to send reinforcements down as quick as I can. Attack, attack. Attack. And I think that's the capital taken on turn 196. We have a domination victory. And to be honest, I'm particularly proud of this one. Given the absolute faff we had with China at the start, that was three wars it took to get over this defensive river with an encampment where I've got that industrial zone now. That was a really difficult take. Just goes to show though the power of sort of taking a moment, taking a peace deal, grinding out a lot of gold per turn and gold up front, upgrading your army, and then riding the tech advantages. I used MP, but obviously Obviously, if MP isn't your thing because you're not playing Zulu, then Man at Arms, Pikemen, both of those are very good rushes indeed. Oh, I love playing Zulu. Zulu are one of my favorites in the game. There's something about them that just works so well. They're so synergized. They're so fun, especially when you hit military academies. We are ninth in position. 
game and let's look at some graphs. You can see buildings constructed. Yeah, I had a very army focused beginning of the game. But you can see once I got a little bit of a snowball, I was pillaging and sending all of the stuff back to my home and then building my economy back home. If we'd been able to get a little bit more momentum beginning of the game, it would have been even more fun. Like two cities in the first 90 turns is ridiculously slow for Zulu. <laughs> but there you go. That's a me thing. Two cities settled the entire game. Uh, I could also have very much settled my own cities as well. I didn't do that. If I'd settled 10, 15 cities like a usual game, I would have found it a lot easier. Culture ended up taking the lead towards the end of the game, but science was mainly my play once I'd managed to hamstring Congo. Faith, you can see when I started stealing cities from Byzantium, here you go, bam, <laughs> their faith goes down, ours goes up. You can see the deity bonus in action here. Look at how much their line goes down compared to mine going up. There's a loyalty thing there. I won't get the full yields, but oh, deity bonuses. Could you imagine a world? It would be fun. There's the score, religions founded, good, right at the end. Units killed. Consistently through the game, units lost. Oh, quite a few for me actually, about eight or nine units, wow. Or declarations received, wonders constructed, I built a single wonder, it was Statue of Zeus. There you go, I have no hope at all of being able to hold on to this city, I don't think, unless, I guess because I've got an army sat on it, maybe I will. Rainer, if you just move in quickly, I have no loyalty in the area and, oh no, it's only minus four. Again, because of Zulu, I have an army sat in there, so I have plus five to loyalty on top of the occupation bonuses. It's really cool. Also proof of, once again, you don't need to take every city on the planet to get the domination victory. You just have to make sure that nobody is going to win a religious victory accidentally as you charge. The introduction of the unique archer and the unique tile improvement, that changed Zulu from a one-dimensional domination machine to something that had a little bit of economic production. The culture I was producing in my lands, especially round here, look at these tiles, six culture on some of these. That was such a fun part of industrializing and improving my economy back home. And I absolutely am gonna play more games with this combination of mods. It was really, really fun. Remember in the comments, let me know if there's any combination you think works well. Once you add in the unique improvement and the unit, which is the best sieve to try. Can't wait to play more. If you wanna play this game, of course it's in Discord. If you wouldn't mind liking the series and subscribing and helping me bust the algorithm and all those usual ways, that would be absolutely amazing. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you all another day. Goodbye. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Radio Torre, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin Mandeltort, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zersa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Sharky Bates, Charlie Bears, Flying Dutch Burbs, Nate the Great, Alex Frost, Mean Penguin, Interplanet Janet, Mr. Awesome, Frankincense Battlesword, Sleepy Lab, Bookaluke 79, The Nickerman, Bob Loblaw, Davilex. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!